So it looks like this is going to be my last update before I hit the big 500 platinum trophies. Because as of yesterday, I hit 499 platinums. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my last three months of gaming and the platinum trophies I've been earning. I had to check because I was actually shocked at how many platinums I'd actually earned since my last update. I thought it must have been six months, but it's actually only been like two and a half. I've earned a lot of plats, which upon reflection probably tells me that my social life has probably been non-existent over the last two to three months. But nonetheless, we must press on and continue with life and trophies, right? So I like to start these videos by comparing my trophy stats from the previous update to this one. So as you can see, I'm on 499 platinum trophies now. I have earned 11 platinums over the last three months since my last update, which is pretty insane, actually. I didn't think I'd even... I set myself a goal of like 12 to 15 platinums per year, and, and clearly I am smashing that with excessive prejudice because I have no life, clearly. So my completion percentage has actually went up from 98.02% to 98 0.12% so I'm up 0.1 which is pretty decent. I have dropped from that 99% because I have been leaving games like Hogwarts Legacy, Cuphead and I may return to them, I may not but I am giving less of a shit about my completion percentage these days. Despite having 11 more Platinums my world rank has still went down by 200 and my country rank has went down by 17. It's just all these easy plats, it's all the jumping games. People are just playing these games and I just either better gamers than me are just playing a lot of easy plats. I tell myself it's just people who are playing easy platinums, that's why they're overtaking me, not because I'm a terrible gamer or anything like that. So my 489th platinum is high on life. Now, I did smash through this game because I wanted to do a video on the week of release, so it only took me like three days to platinum this game. It is an absolutely fantastic game. It's one of the best games I've played this year. There's been a couple of standout games I've played this year, like Elden Ring and this game, where I've just thought like this game is just something else. Yes, it's, it's a first person shooter, set in the by the creators of Rick and Morty which is developed by Scrunch Games and it's offensive it's crass it's sarcastic and it's just my type of humor and it's a game that I have to recommend to everybody it is just so goddamn good so my next platinum was Lego Batman 3 and not only did I do the platinum I did all of the DLC thankfully the DLC is only like two hours a pop and the game itself is like 40 hours so I did this for a few reasons. Firstly, I do want to try and get as many superhero related platinum trophies as I can get. You know, I've got Iron Man, I've, I've got Iron Man 2, Green Lantern, Wolverine, now Lego Batman. I've got a few Spider-Man ones thrown in there, Infamous as well. And I, I am working towards getting as many of them as I can that are not disgustingly too long. Some of them are really brutal, like Injustice, and maybe someday I will go for them. But they're like 100 hours, 200 hours, and a lot of it's just boosting and repetitiveness. This game is kind of like that though, I can't lie, so I'm going to be truthful and say that although I wanted to play this game, I did see a lot of LEGO games blowing up on YouTube and I was like, yeah okay, I'm going to I'm gonna, you know, dip my toe in that because they're not too bad. Originally I actually wanted to play LEGO Batman 2, I bought it on PS3 and my capture card would not work. I could not get my capture card to, for some reason, get the PlayStation 3 footage. I think it must have had like extra, extra locks on it. So I went for LEGO Batman 3, a lot of the people, asked, a lot of the videos were like, Lego Batman 3, relive my childhood, blah, blah, blah. And I um, I didn't play Lego Batman 3 as a kid, I played Lego Batman 2, and it wasn't that good. I think Lego games are fine, great for kids. The Platinum Trophies are pretty brutal, and this is like a, a tame version as well, at 40 hours. There's some ones that are like 80, 90, 100 hours. The Skywalker Saga is like, what, 150, 200 hours? Like, just excessive, excessive grind and collecting, and it's just not that enjoyable. The gameplay loops pretty fine it's literally just here are some characters use their suits or use a certain character's ability to progress to the next section of the game so i'm, I'm not going to sit here and say the platinum trophies was particularly good uh, i don't think it's actually a particularly good game for adults i think for kids maybe yeah but i um i would not recommend this one at all and all the positive reviews on youtube i was like what are you guys playing the same game as me this game is hella boring hella tedious yeah mm, platbo does not like lego games apparently. So another Batman game was Gotham Knight, which was my 490th Platinum. I did this game with ZXL and I did speak about this briefly on my previous trophy update and of course High in Life Lego Batman and Gotham Knights. You can actually watch my full videos on these if you want to get my full opinion. I thought it was pretty good, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I think the DLC was a little bit grindy but it was okay. The game itself is pretty enjoyable. I think it was overhyped because it has the, obviously the Batman name attached to it it's a batman universe and people were expecting massive things with this game it's a fine two-player 
um, Batman game. I would give it a solid 7 out of 10. If you like Batman, you will enjoy the game. The gameplay is decent enough and it's only 40 hours to get the Platinum. I liked it and I thought all four of the back characters all played really well, other than Robin. Robin played well, but his traversal was, was absolutely awful. But the game is pretty decent. I don't think it deserves the flack that I got. All right, next was DC League Super Pets, The Adventures of Crypto and Ace. Now, I did this game because it is only a two-hour Platinum Trophy. I did it because I wanted to stream a game, and I also was aware that I wanted to get the 499 Platinums sooner rather than later. I was thinking, I think going in the past couple months, there is a few games that are only four or five hours because I was like, I want to get ready for my 500th Platinum Trophy. So because of that, I'm going to pick up a few easier games and just stream them or just play them and have fun with them. This game wasn't that fun. It's not the game I thought it was. I thought it was going to be like over the top sort of fighting game like or something like Lego, but it's actually just a flying game. I don't think I recommend it, but it is on PS Plus if you want a Platinum. That's going to take you two hours and it's free, then have at it. Next was Assassin's Creed Liberation. So I decided to do a challenge for this one. I think it becomes quite clear how I got through so many games because I did a 24 hour challenge for this game. Now this game is a 15 hour Platinum Trophy and I did it in about 15, 16 hours non-stop. I did a video on this which you can watch as well and I really enjoyed it. It's the first Assassin's Creed game I played in probably about four or five years and it's a really good game. It's, it's simple, it's not too big. The only problem is this one after playing Assassin's Creed 2 as well, this one seems to have a nightmare amount of collectibles for how small the world is you only get like three there's only three locations and each one has like 60 collectibles in each location which is just insane it took me about i think it took me 10 hours to beat the game and then it took me five hours to do all of the collectibles which is just like crazy and the map was so hard to navigate especially the map in the swamp it was really hard to really hard to navigate but the gameplay is really fun the character has three different styles so you have like a slave style an assassin style and like a lady style which all have different elements of gameplay for different levels it's different and it's it just kept the gameplay fresher and i'm not entirely sure this game came out around about assassin's creed 3 so that it's got assassin's creed 3's level of parkouring which i found refreshing because i was playing assassin's creed 2 at the same time so my next platinum was assassin's creed 2 i wanted to go back i just felt like going back and experience that your story again and assassin's creed 2 is an absolutely fantastic assassin's creed game i think it's got a really sound story you have to bear in mind when you're playing it that it is a little bit old and it, even though it's remastered, it's it's a bit janky. The, the parkour is not smooth as you'd like and the combat's a little repetitive and easy. But what it offers is still a really good time and Etcho is such a good character. And I just love his bromance with Leonardo da Vinci. It's just so adorable. And it's a story set of like 30 years. You really see Ezio like mature and grow from this naive kid running through the streets of Florence to basically taking down Templars. And it is really, really cool. And I think if you want to jump into an Assassin's Creed game, I don't think it's a bad start. I think the original trilogy was when it was at its prime. So I would still recommend it, even though that game is about 16 years old. Next, we've got Pursuit Force. Now, this was a PSP game that was recently remastered on PlayStation Plus Premium. I remember playing this game on PSP. I don't remember it being as hard as it actually is in this game. The, ga the guy's like a three out of 10. I'm like, there's no way this game's a three out of 10. It's not that hard, but I'd probably give it like a four or a five because there's no tutorial on how the game works, right? And you know, it's, it's a vehicle combat game. You spend time basically chasing other cars, shooting other cars, jumping from car to car, which is which is pretty sick. But this level, some of the levels are just so damn hard and the boss fights and stuff, like it's, the boss the boss fights are, are timed. The whole, every level is timed because you have to do something before you get to the final destination. And the boss fights are timed. So you might have two kilometers to kill a boss who's like destroying your vehicle and making you have to change vehicles every 30 seconds which takes 15 seconds like i would say every boss took me at least five attempts some took 10 15 attempts so the psp games on on playstation have a rewind feature so you can actually rewind like two minutes of the game so if you had to do the whole game without that re rewind feature it would be like a six out of ten but thankfully with that it doesn't help that much with that, it just helps speed it up. So, you know, you, if you make a mistake, you can go and try again by just rewinding. But it's an absolutely fantastic game. I would recommend it. If you have PS Plus, it'll take you six hours, seven hours to platinum. It's a little bit frustrating at times, a little bit challenging, but it's just such a nostalgic game for me. Difficult and janky and very much a PSP game, but it is a good time. All right, next is Aerial Knights Never Yield. Now, I haven't done the DLC for this because I cannot be asked. There's like a DLC for like a endless run mode at the end and you've got to survive 
something like 160 laps, which is about six, seven minutes without getting hit once. It's literally just like a platforming. It's like it's a free running game where basically the obstacles you you basically running you're basically running and then the obstacles you either jump over, slide under, or park over them. It's a pretty simple premise. The game is really short, talking about an hour and a half. I thought it would talk about three, four hours, but it took about an hour and a half to get the platinum trophy and. It's an okay little game. It's like a, it's like a literally an indie game. I just bought it again because it had been on my list for a long time. I actually originally was going to do a speed run on this game, but then things happened. And I thought, nah, I'm not going to bother because it, it looks like it's quite a fast-paced game. It's an enjoyable evening, so if you want to just you know boot it up for a night, you can you can have you get a platinum in two hours and have a good time with it. It's simple. It's a good premise, and it doesn't feel like a cheap game. I would say. Someone's put the time in to make this game, and I think it's worth worth a punt. Quickly on Final Fantasy VII, I've been streaming Final Fantasy VII for like eight weeks now, and I think I've probably put in about ten hours, and I have four trophies to show for it. Um, it's an alright game. It obviously came out on PS1. It was a PS1 version. I've never played Final Fantasy VII before, so I don't have the nostalgia tied to it. I like the combat system. Its story so far is pretty good. Uh, I will get the platinum for this game eventually, but I think it's probably going to take another two or three months at this rate because I'm only doing I'm streaming like twice a month. But it's, it's not right time. All right, next we've got Football Manager 2023. I didn't capture any footage for this one because I just thought it was a game I wanted to play for me. And this game actually took me like 100 hours to platinum. It was, those who like football, it's basically, you know, it's a football manager simulating game. Essentially, you have to win the league, win all these leagues. You have to win like manager of the year. I like simulator games. I like Football Manager. It's a really good series. If you like, Football, it is definitely worth playing. If you like FIFA, it's definitely worth playing. The Platinum Trophy isn't hard, it's just a bit time consuming and there's no guides on the internet on how to do a lot of the trophies. So you have to kind of use your noggin to try and solve it. It took me about 100 hours. I think if I did it again, I think I could probably do it in about 40, but only because of a few trophies that really hold you back. You have to get in the Hall of Fame for managers, which means you basically have to play like a top team, Man City or Barcelona or PSG and win two or three cups a year for about four or five seasons. So even with simming and stuff like that, that trophy alone will take you about 20 hours. But I'm proud of this Platinum. Maybe I should have done a video on it in hindsight, but I just wanted to have a good time with it. And sometimes, you know, you've got to get that balance. You know, on YouTube, people don't really talk about it, but if you only game for YouTube, it could be quite difficult to get the balance to get that. Because if you're, play, if you're playing a game for YouTube, I'm always like making notes, thinking about how I'm going to include it in the video. But I was playing this game with my mind switched off and I was just solving the problems of how to get Newcastle United to win the Premier League, which we did second season. So that's all that matters. Premier League win for Newcastle and a platinum for Plat Bro. All right, next we've got Maud Howe. So I played Chivalry 2 last year. I made a video on it. I'm proud of that video. The video is excellent. And the platinum trophy is absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best games I played last year. An absolute hoot. It's so funny. It's a medieval first or third person multiplayer game, hack and slash, but PvP. So Maud Howe, I believe the company that made Chivalry 1, they split into two different gaming companies and one made Maud Howe and one made Chivalry 2. So when Chivalry 2 was announced, so when Mordhau was announced to PS5, the guys I did Chivalry 2 with, we were, we were pretty stoked for it. We were, we were like, hey, let's give it a go. It could be really fun. Chivalry 2 was amazing. So Mordhau is definitely a far inferior version of Chivalry 2 in pretty much every way. Firstly, even though the game came out like two months ago, the servers are absolutely dead. So the game modes are 16 versus 16 or 32 versus 32. And on an evening, on an English evening, there's probably only about 200 people playing the game and it's cross-platform. Chivalry 2 had that problem, but Chivalry 2 had bots, so you could play 32v32 and 10, 15 of them would be bots, so there was more going on, it felt more grand. Mordhau has no bot system at all, which really just kind of ruins the game because you're always playing, you join a game, there's six of you at each. And you can just change team whenever you want, so people just join the bigger team, there'll be 12 people on one team and six of you on the other team. And it just, it just is not very fun. The combat is a lot harder to learn as well. Shiru 2 was a lot more comical, but it still felt like a good medieval hack and slash. This game, it just felt like the parry system was just way too difficult to master, and it made a harder fight in more than one enemy. Whereas Shiru 2, you could happily take on 1v3 and wait until someone came to, your, to help you, whereas more how you're basically dead straight away. The platinum trophy only took us like 50 hours because you can boost every single trophy in private servers. So we spent 30, 40 hours sitting in private servers taking turns killing each other without the servers the game would have been like an 80 to 90 hour platinum trophy so we're just like let's just do it this game's not as good as we thought it was going to be let's just grind out with some boosting and then we can move on and five of us who did this together it was myself zxl Figer, dead man walking and shadow impact uk and we got through it in the end but it did involve a lot of standing still while other people just took turns punching you to death all right next we have the artful escape which is my most recent platinum my 499th platinum and i have to say this game 
was fantastic. It's on PS Plus Premium if you're interested at the moment, and essentially, you play as this kid who's having this existential crisis because his his uncle is this famous folk musician, and he ends up getting recruited by the Light Man, who is this intergalactical rock star, and he goes across this whole journey about basically finding his music and finding himself and it's beautiful and it's a it's a musical game so you can play guitars all the time and you have like these big grand rock battles with like aliens and it's only four or five hour platinum trophy and there's not missable trophies at all there's no collectibles i think there's like eight things you have to jam into the floor and that's it and you get the platinum trophy and it is a really good story and it's just beautiful it's absolutely stunning this game and I wasn't expecting it to be as beautiful as it was, I really wasn't. There's a nice little story there with some beautiful visuals. The gameplay is fun because it's short, yeah, if it was 10 hours long, you would have got a bit bored. But it's the gameplay feels secondary to the world and the story that you're being told, but then when the gameplay wants to work and wants you to play it, it is pretty engaging, I have to say. Solid game. So that's me at 499 Platinum Trophies. Do I have my 500 Platinum Trophy planned? I think I do. I am not too sure yet. I'm going to be doing a video on my founder's Platinum Trophy alongside with, you know, a little flashback, a little look back on my journey. Let me know what Platinum Trophies you've earned recently. I'd love to know. And thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.